Good morning, Chula Vista. I hope everyone's doing well. My name is Mrs. Hughes. Welcome back to our Innovation Live event. Um, the energy station where I work here is a family of career themed makerspaces in our Chula Vista Elementary School District located at the South Branch Library. And our focus is to teach about potential careers in the clean energy industry and educate our students about the value of renewable energy sources. Well, today I'd like to take a moment to thank our station partners, the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the City of Chula Vista, our Chula Vista Public Libraries, sdg and &E, NECA, and IBW, who keep our program going all year round. Well, today's live event, you're here, it's because, because it's called Chemical Reaction Cars. And if you watched our last live event with Miss Lopez of the Innovation Station last week, she made a crafty car using popsicle sticks and rubber bands. Well, today our car is different because we're going to fill this one up with some fuel. So behind the scenes, I have Mrs. Feistrecht and Coach Ramirez who are here with me to moderate the chat and take all of your questions. At the end, we're going to have another Kahoot game. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, what are chemicals? We use different kinds of chemicals every day. Here's a picture to give you some hints. Some might be for cleaning, like the one you see here. But do you know there's even chemicals that you eat? Yeah, so think about that. So for this morning's first question, I like to ask you, can you think of some chemicals that we use every day and what are they for? Think of that question and I'll come back to share your ideas. Well, first, let's learn a little bit more about chemicals from our friends at SciShow Kids. Let's take a listen. Speaks and I were just doing an experiment. We're mixing things up and seeing what happens. We're doing chemistry. Squeaks and I were just doing our experiment for fun, but some scientists get to do it all the time. Everything in the world is made of chemicals, which are the different materials that go together to make up all of the stuff around you. Everything that you can see, touch, smell, or even taste. The dirt, the air, you and me and squeaks too, it's all chemicals. Scientists called chemists study chemicals, what they do, and how they can change. Basically, chemists try to explain why things act the way they do. There's a whole lot of stuff in the world to explain, like why does water turn to ice when it's cold? How does soap clean our hands? And why did this white stuff get all bubbly when I poured this all over it? Sometimes when certain chemicals come together, you can see a really cool reaction, the kind of stuff that chemists love to watch. OK, so now we kind of know the basics of what chemistry is. And thinking of that question that we had in the beginning, I want you to think of, can you think of any chemicals that we use every day? So Ms. Bystrack, do we have any suggestions from our viewers out there? What are some chemicals? Oh, yes. Good morning, Mrs. Hughes. So it looks like we have some friends out there saying um, a lot of them are, must have been in cars today. A lot of them are saying gasoline. Um, we have Nicholas out there saying for soap and cleaning. Um, somebody says out there, let's see, our friend, it says a username, I like cars. It says you can use chemicals for pools, so keeping it clean. We talk about that a lot, the hydro station. Uh, Vin says uh, we use shampoo to wash our hair. Trying to Perfect. See here. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Clean says uh, bleach. Bleach is a chemical that we can use, Ooh, right? For yeah. maybe disinfecting and cleaning. And then again, yeah, lots of friends must have uh, gasoline on their mind because I see lots of uh, students <laughs> responding with gas out there. So that kind of makes sense, uh, especially if you probably were, if your families drove you to school today. Um, just seeing the cars that are out there. And it's a good point to talk about since we're talking about cars this morning. Um, and it makes sense too, even this morning, if you took a shower, I mean, what did you use? You cleaned yourself with soap and shampoo. So you're right, a lot of everyday chemicals that we use from morning till the afternoon and night, um, thinking of things like transportation and whatnot. So thanks for those suggestions, guys, and keep thinking, what are some chemicals that you might be using every day? Awesome. Great, Miss Hughes. Well, as you heard in the video, everything you see, 
smell, touch is made up of chemicals of some kind. And that's why chemists are so important to help understand how we use them for energy and even what we do in our environment around us. Well, chemists might work to come up with medicines. You didn't think about that. So medicines or even better cleaners for your home, like we saw in that previous picture. Some chemists are going to work to help farmers out improve their crops. Maybe some of you have a garden at home and you're using a fertilizer of some kind. But where I work at at the energy station, we actually talk a lot about a ways to produce energy without harming the environment. So chemists work to make, for example, better batteries for those cars, um, solar panels for homes and businesses, and just even cleaner ways to run our cars so they don't pollute the air. Now, we already know cars can run on electricity, but did you know that some cars can actually run off of corn? Yeah, corn, or even an element called hydrogen. So both of those produce less fumes or maybe none at all. And chemistry is what makes all that happen. Now, as we build today, I want you to try to imagine that you're taking on this role of a materials scientist. These are scientists that are really chemists who study and test different natural and human made materials. They're investigating ways to make the products we use even better. Now, if you've ever created your own uh, homemade slime or played with a kid's chemistry kit, you've actually acted like a material scientist. So imagine if you were a material scientist and you were in charge of developing a brand new fuel that could power a car. What do you think that could be? Again, we know that gas powered cars are only going to harm the environment over time. So Send us your, your unique ideas. What could you power a car of in the future? And that's our question you see on the screen. What would you use to power a car in the future? All right, send those ideas in. All right, well, let's get right to our project. We're going to dive into the engineering design process for this build. Our problem is, on the left, design a car that moves without fossil fuels. And again, fossil fuels are what you guys already mentioned, gasoline. They produce lots of carbon emissions. Our solution, can we create a moving car using just kitchen ingredients? Yeah, kitchen ingredients. So first step is to ask some questions. One question I might have is, well, what kind of kitchen ingredients are actually safe to use? Okay, because safety comes first. Uh, how long do you think my car can move with this fuel that I'm choosing? Because again, people have to refill with gasoline. Well, what kind of fuel can I use? It's going to extend the length of that, the travel of that car. And as I'm continuing to um, go through my engineering design process, I'm going to start imagining ways that that might work. So what do I actually know already about how cars are designed? Think about the car that maybe your family has. Okay, there's all sorts of shapes and sizes, speeds, um, you know, small, large trucks, all sorts of things. So what do you already know that you could incorporate into your build today? All right, so now we're down to our materials. To make your cars this morning, you're gonna need several materials. All right, so let's be patient. We have first our must have list. You are going to need an empty water bottle with its cap. So hopefully you didn't throw the cap away. You're going to need four extra bottle caps, and these are going to be our wheels. So if you can try to make them the same size or similar sizes, that'd be great. And actually, if you don't have caps, you could probably try out cardboard. I mean, there's always you know ways you can go around this. Maybe you can make some wheels from cardboard instead or, or a paper plate, but the caps would probably be your best bet. Next one, you're going to need four pony beads. Now, these are the type of little craft beads you maybe use to make bracelets. But again, if you don't have those, I'm going to show you an alternative um, that you could possibly use if you don't have craft beads. You'll need one straw, one wooden skewer, some glue, tape, and of course, scissors. 
Now that's all to make the car. Now on the right side, the may have, this is for the actual chemical reaction, the experiment. So if you're not ready to do the experiment in class today, maybe you're gonna do this after school or before lunch, and you guys are gonna go outside, um, you'll need these materials to do outside, okay? So the may haves, you will need a small piece of tissue paper, a little square, maybe like four by four. You can also try Kleenex, maybe a scrap of a napkin or paper towel. You're gonna need one to two tablespoons of baking soda, depending on the size of your bottle. And then about one cup of vinegar per bottle. Okay, so I know that's a lot, but if you have all those materials, you can try it out. Oops, okay, so now actually let's go ahead and we're gonna switch over to my doc cam. I'm gonna show you my build, so give me a second here. A little too early for that one. Let's go ahead and try that. Okay, Ms. Spystrick, do they see my materials? Yes, we do. Great, great. Let me go ahead okay. and put that up also. Okay, so it feels like a lot today, but bear with me. It's actually a fairly simple build. And again, if you think about what Ms. Lopez did with you last week at the Innovation Station. It's very similar. And you can probably incorporate some of what she did too. So first of all, let me show you what my car will look like. This is my car. Okay, so at least you know what your end product should look like. Oh, let me see, get in focus there. I'll make sure I lock that in. So we're not gonna be all squirrely this morning. There we go. Okay, so put that aside. So I have my water bottle with its cap, my four uh, other extra bottle, ca bottle, bottle caps and the beads, uh, my glue, straw, <coughs> excuse me, skewer, tape and scissors. Here's my baking soda. I'm gonna put this off to the side for now because I don't wanna lose that. And I am gonna use a hot glue gun today, friends, um, but if you are using white glue, I understand. Um, just be patient because that may take a little bit longer to dry. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so. I'm going to start first with the wheels. Now, if you remember in previous builds, I have actually have made different other other types of cars. Um, the way a car moves, it's called a, has a wheel and an axle. So obviously these are wheels, but the, the sticks, the stick and the straw, that's going to be the axle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my straw in half, okay? And if you have a pencil, you could probably mark this off. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. It's right about there. So I'm gonna cut this in half. Carefully, all right. And that's about right. Okay, put that to the side, okay? And I'm going to also cut my skewer in half. Now, with my skewer, I don't want this tip here, so I'm just gonna very carefully kind of score this. So when I say score it, I'm just kind of putting my scissors in here and wiggling this in just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a notch. Because I don't want it flying across the room. And then I'm going to bend this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to wiggle that more, bend that off and just put that aside. Okay. All right. Same thing here. I'm going to kind of cut this in half. So right about there. I'm going to again score this with my scissors. I'm making notches. All right again, this is called the axle. Bend that carefully there. So I didn't, didn't have pieces of wood flying all over the place. All right, put that aside. Okay, then I'm going to do my wheels. Now, again, if you have pony beads, great. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more again. Okay, zooming in. Lock that. OK, if you have beads, great. If you don't, I actually have on this car, you'll notice here little pieces of straw. Or straws. Yeah, straws <laughs> like straws. So I had little pieces of straw that I cut off and I'm just trying to it's just kind of freewheeling here. So let me first show you what it looks like. I'm going to take my my glue gun. And again, if you're um, one of our littles, 
you want to use have an adult help you out, guys. OK, because glue guns need to be safe, but I'm going to just go and put the glue in the middle. And I'm going to glue that pony bead in. Just like this. All right, and so again, have an adult or an older student help you out. Right, OK, and set that aside and let that dry. And what we're, why we're putting these in is this is going to help the stick. It's going to help this. The stick is going to um, be able to kind of free wheel in between there. All right. All right, very good. OK, we got another one. So we're going to do this three more times. And as we're doing that, we're going to let that uh, glue kind of dry. Now, the great thing about the hot glue is this should be pretty much dry and just like you know, 30 seconds to a minute. So I'm just going to let them, putting them aside, letting them dry. Again, if you have white glue, it might take you a little bit longer. So just kind of be patient with it. Now, with Miss Lopez's crafty car, she kind of did the same thing where she just poked a hole in these caps instead and the skewer went through. Um, again, that could be something to modify it. These are all different methods, like again, designing a different car. All right, so now I have those four there. All right. And now I'm going to assemble my axle with the wheel. So I'm going to take one of the skewers and just feed that through the straw. All right. You want to have a little bit of space here. Okay. Make sure you have some space. Don't don't trim it off all the way. You want to have some space, some wiggle room, probably about a pinky's fingernail of space. Okay. And then I'm actually going to just take the stick. See, this one I think was dry first. And I'm going to put some glue in here and affix the axle in into this pony bead. OK, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue. OK, you see that? OK, put the stick in the glue and that should dry pretty quickly. Just feed that on. There you go, like that. OK, I'm just going to hold it still for a couple seconds. Let it sit tight. I'm actually going to just put that to the side. I'm not going to put the other wheel on yet because I have to, have to make sure that it stays dry, but I'll do the second axle. Ah, come here, buddy. All right, stay there. Glue in the middle. So. I know we're, we're saying that we're working as a material scientist today, but when you think about when people design machinery and cars, um, another time, another event that we've done, we talked about a mechanical engineer, and this is kind of like being a mechanical engineer. So if you like this part of your, your build, you're actually creating kind of all the mechanics that go into it, okay? All right, I'll let that kind of sit and dry a little bit. All right. All right, and then the last part, we're just going to fix these on. So I think this one should be dry. I'm going to test it here. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. OK, but the last one's on. They're very light, so it's like kind of flying all over the place. There we go. I'm going to hold that still. All right, as I'm building, I hope you guys are writing in some of your suggestions for what could we power cars in the future? I'm sure we have some awesome ideas out there. What could we be powering our cars with in the future? All right, OK, I think we're almost good to go. Seems like it took a long time for the wheels, but you know, it'll be worth it now. Here's something you want to check as you're building. See how I'm trying to spin this and I think my straw got stuck on the glue, so I just pulled it off really fast. You want to make sure that your straw is free. OK, make sure your straw is free. There we go, both of them are free. Awesome. All right, so we're done with our wheels. We're just going to assemble it to our car, which is the body of our car would be the bottle. OK, now. When we get to the experiment, when we put the fuel in, just like a normal car or a gas power car, when you put fuel in something, there's always something that comes out of the car, right? So 
that means we need to have the chemicals come out of the bottle somehow. And so we're going to take this cap and we're going to take it off the bottle and we're going to poke a hole in it. Now, again, there's a couple ways you can do this. You could carefully poke a hole with scissors or have an adult or an older student do that. Or I found this really cool trick. <coughs> Excuse me. It only works with the hot glue gun. If I'm careful, I can take the tip of this glue gun and watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to burn a hole into the top. So I'm just pressing this down. Look at that. So that's that's what happens when you burn plastic. But look, it made it a nice kind of perfect circle that I think my fuel will be able to escape through the top. OK, so I didn't poke anything with my scissors, but we want to make a punch a little small hole into the cap. All right, that back on. Now I'm pretty much done with my glue gun. If you want to use the glue gun for this, you could, but since I have my tape, I'm going to tape my wheel and axle to the bottle. Again, if you want to hot glue it, you could if you have it. Um, I would say probably Elmer's glue might not be able to stick really well here because there's some grooves in here. Um, it just might take longer to dry. So I think masking tape, duct tape would be the best bet. So I'm going to take a little piece of duct tape about that much. I'm going to try to line this up carefully. I don't want to have a crooked car. I'm going to use my monitor to kind of watch this and tape that on. All right, I think that's straight. I don't want a crooked car. Kind of reminds me like you go to the grocery store and you ever get that shopping cart where like the wheel is all wobbly. It's a pain to try to push the cart, huh? OK, here we go. Oops, stay there. So if you have a friend, if you're working in groups, maybe someone can hold the bottle still and someone can tape it down. All right, that's pretty much it. That's that's our bottle, right? Again, just making sure that the wheels are free form and they're moving. This one seems a little stuck, but we'll see how it goes. And that you have a hole in the top of your bottle cap. OK, now after this, let's say you're done and you guys are ready to go outside to experiment. This is not something you're going to do in the classroom or in, inside your house because it's going to be a mess. But you will need the other three in ingredients, the may do part, which would be the baking soda and the vinegar. Okay, and I don't have the vinegar in front of me because I want to have any liquids near my my device right now, but this is baking soda. So I'm just going to show you how to put this baking soda into your paper. So here's my piece of paper. I've already measured out a tablespoon and I'm just going to gently put that in the on the paper. If some spills off, it's not a big deal. But here's what you're going to want to try to do. You're going to want to try to make a little package. Okay. So you want to try to make a little package, not a giant pile, but a little package where it's kind of long and slender. And you're going to try to wrap it like a burrito. So now I made you all hungry, but we're going to try to wrap this like a burrito. So I'm going to fold in the sides. And I'm going to try to get this up here where. I can grab all of this and if some spills out. It's OK, but I'm going to try to wrap it as best I can. So again, depending on the paper you have, you know, tissue paper sometimes is, is a lot easier to form. It's nice and thin. I'm kind of using a little piece of butcher paper. But that's what you're going to do because. Grab our car again. When you go outside. You and your adult are going to fill your bottle up with that cup of vinegar. It's going to be about halfway in the bottle and then you're going to carefully Try to shove this in here without too much spilling. And then close the cap. OK, you don't want to put it all the way in and then you can't close the cap because you're going to see the reaction happen really fast. OK, you're going to push this in here. I'm not going to push it all the way. Push it all in here. Close the cap really tight and then put your finger on the top so nothing explodes yet. All right. And then you set it down on the ground and see what happens. OK, but that's how it's going to look. So I actually, since I couldn't do this in here, I'm going to show you a quick video. I'm going to hop back to my presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. 
And I'm going to hop back to my presentation. Let's see where I'm at here. OK. Let me see if I can get rid of this. All right, so we have a quick video. Oops, I actually need some sound on this. Sorry. You guys are very patient. OK. So we have a video just where you can kind of look and see how this will actually look like. Um, if you guys were to do this outside. OK, so let's take a look and see what could happen if you do this chemical reaction. OK, that quick, pretty quick. OK, so we made the car, you made the build. Um, you're going to try the chemical reaction, but we want to know what is happening. So let me explain to you before you go out there later what is going on with this chemical reaction. Um, we have two things that we put in our bottle, baking soda and vinegar. In science, we call the baking soda is called a base. And the vinegar is called an acid. OK, and when the two of them mix, they give off a gas called carbon dioxide. OK, a lot of fancy words. Um, you probably heard of that word before. And did you know we actually breathe out carbon dioxide every time you exhale? OK, and since the bottle was all closed up, as you saw there in the video, um, the gas wants to get out. It's pushing. OK, it's really pressing to get out and the only way out is the top of the cap top of the hole okay so you kind of see here in this picture that's not enough for it to get out and so what happens is the gas is trying to push and push and push to get out um and the only way is through that hole and it's actually going to push the bottle forward okay it's pressurized gas okay that's what we call it, pressurized gas so when it's done making that reaction it's eventually going to stop OK, it's kind of like you see in this picture um, when you open a new bottle of soda, that fizzy sound when you crack it open. That's the carbon dioxide that's trying to get out of the bottle. It's got to get out. OK, so that's what's happening. That's your chemical reaction. All right, so. We asked you earlier. What are some ways you could possibly power a car of the future? And I want you to be thinking about um, what that might have been because we obviously I don't think we can make a car run off of baking soda, but we have a video here to share of you with some other kids who maybe thought of some other ways to make a future power car run. So let's hear what these kids have to say. Oh, he's got a rocket shirt too. Oh, oh my God. Oh, this kid's awesome. At Consumer Reports, we believe fuel efficiency is super important to the future of cars and to the next generation of drivers. So we wanted to have a little fun and see what future car owners envision driving one day. We talked to kids who participated in Disney's Create Tomorrowland XPRIZE Challenge, and let's just say they've got some really creative ideas. To further explore some of the designs, I teamed up with Amos Winter, a mechanical engineering professor at MIT. My car was designed to use natural photosynthesis, and in the future, we harnessed that power and we drove it. So what we have is basically a clean energy cycle. There's no bad waste product. The only waste product is oxygen, and that actually promotes more plants. Katrina's photosynthesis power car is really cool. Her, I think her knowledge of biology exceeds ours. She has a lot of elements in her idea that are actually happening now. The idea of growing fuel with like biodiesel and having algae mm -hmm. that uses photosynthesis <clears throat> to produce oil, people are working on that. Let's get real. All energy comes from the sun. Everything yes. that we eat comes from the sun. She's looking at just taking that solar panel, but actually using the biology that's been here for, you know, millions and millions of years and just using that to power. It's an um, air compression car that turns some turbines on the axle of the car, and the more the turbine spins, the faster you'll go. And it's powered by a solar panel on the top of the roof. The solar panel will actually power the compressor so that you don't actually have to go and recharge. You can stay on the road however long you want. I would like it to look more like a sports car instead of a regular sedan. The potential for advances in solar technology are huge because 
right now the best solar cells would be about 20 percent efficient so that's like 20 percent of the energy coming from the sun hitting the cell is actually converted into electrical energy you up that efficiency you can make huge strides it's an electric scooter that has an engine in it instead of batteries and it works by taking the water converting it into hydrogen by electrolysis and then it goes into the engine that burns it and converts it into rotary motion. And also these scooters fly, right? Yeah. So how does that part work? Where will that be figured out in the future? Figure out in the future. They want an environment around when they're going to be 90. And with the prospect of things like climate change, it's pretty scary for 13 years old. Okay, well, those are some amazing ideas. So I know you guys can come up with something for the future. You're our future engineers. Well, on to the last stage, which is improving. Um, I know after you do this experiment, you're probably going to be thinking, how can I improve my design? So here's some suggestions. What if you change the shape of the bottle? Because there's not just, you know, the bottle I have, but there's maybe square shapes. Maybe have a small bottle. Maybe have a bigger bottle at home that your family's using in the kitchen that's not for water, some other liquid. Um, you could change the height. If you look at this picture here, um, bottle's a little bit elevated. So what would happen if, if you, you know, increase the height on the bottle or even change the wheels? And then how about the actual experiment stage, the testing stage? What if you change the amount of baking soda or vinegar? So there's lots of ways that you guys can improve your design based on those individual variables. All right, you guys have been patient. We're finally at the point for our Kahoot. And I noticed earlier, some of you, since you, you snuck that code in, you're ready to go. Um, go ahead and open another window instead of a tab, and you'll get to see my questions on one window and your answer buttons on another. Um, the pin is on the screen, 222-507. And I'm going to go ahead and get mine ready to go. But as you're waiting for our friends to join us, Mrs. Bystrack, do you have any interesting comments about our earlier question? How would kids power a car of the future or something they would do to improve their chemical cars? Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> Ms. Hughes, we have lots of great answers. I bet I think some of our Chula Vista Elementary School District students should have been in that video because they had some... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> similar ideas here. So it looks like we have lots of friends out there saying, you know, solar energy and why wait for the future, right? I'm, it sounds like some of those things are in the works already. Yep. Um, we have Jamal says water. Hey. Um, I'm wondering if it could be salt water just because that's more abundant than our fresh drinking water, right? That's true. <laughs> what else here? We also have um, a Gemma says vinegar and baking soda. I wonder how how much of that resource those resources yeah. we actually have. Mm -hmm. Somebody says maybe powering it by medicine. Mm. We also have friends out there. Santino says um, there's maybe some other kind of fossil fuels that we can maybe harness or things like food waste. So maybe like Ooh. compost composting. Yeah. I know I know when it's trash day, my family we throw out a lot of food that just is kind of not edible anymore so man if i could power my car that way i'd love it that is you know i want to go off of that that comment that's an amazing idea whoever came up with that one um so here's something that's that we didn't really talk about um there's a, a type of energy called biomass and as i mentioned earlier i said some cars can run off of corn so did you know that corn fuel is actually called ethanol and next time you go near a gas station, I want you to look for that word ethanol. It's a big word. Or just for the letters E and the number 85, E85. And so actually there's a lot of cars out there that are running right now on part corn fuel. And so people don't really think about that, but that's a helpful thing for the environment because you're not burning off a lot of fossil fuels. And then actually, as a matter of fact, in some countries, like you just said, Ms. Feistrack, is they do take their food waste, they put them in this digester, kind of like your stomach, and they use that and they harness these other chemicals. It's amazing. These other chemicals called methane and the methane helps power um, electrical equipment for these countries. And so there's other countries that are already starting or have done this for quite a while where they are recycling, they're composting, they're digesting all this food waste, this trash, and they're using it where it's not turning into a giant landfill and just sitting there. So I think you guys are right on it because um, we got to do something, right? I mean, we have all this stuff and people consume a lot. What can we do to 
kind of keep the cycle where you're recycling what you have, but using it for good things, for electricity, for fuel, and that sort of thing. So awesome, you guys. Keep thinking of those ideas. That's fantastic. So it looks like we got a lot of people in there. Uh, Ms. Spystruck, do you think we're ready to start our Kahoot? Yes, I believe so. If you could so. share that Kahoot screen, we can see some of those usernames. Oh, yeah. that would help. I thought I had <laughs> up there. <laughs> OK, so I'm going right. to stop sharing on my screen because I, I saw it on mine, but I think I probably have to do another screen here. So let me try that one more time. Sorry about that. OK, how about that? All right, uh, give us just a moment here and it looks like we are good to go. All right, awesome. Looks like we have about 48 players. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. And if you aren't quite in, go ahead and get your names in and we're going to start our Kahoot. Here we go. Chemical reaction cars. All right, question number one, everyone. A chemist studies first plants, red triangle. A chemist studies animals yellow circle a chemist studies reactions of things blue diamond or a chemist studies space green square what does a chemist study does a chemist study animals excuse me plants red triangle animals yellow circle a reaction of things blue diamond or does a chemist study space green square. Now here's a hint. All four of those are types of scientists, but they have different special specialties. So think about what the word or the definition of a chemist would be since it is working with chemicals intent. And you have one more second. OK, good. It's a reaction of things. The other ones, those would be different. Actually, our our uh, teacher, Miss Kiris, would know which ones about animals. Right. OK, here's our scoreboard. Great quail. Good job. Question number two, friends. Chemistry is important to do what? Chemistry important is important to study medicine. Red triangle. Chemistry is important to help farmers. Yellow circle. Chemistry is important to help the environment. Blue diamond. Chemistry is important to all of the above. Green square. So why do we study chemistry and why is it important? Is it just for studying medicine? Again, red triangle. Is it just to help farmers out? Yellow circle. Is it important just to help the environment? Blue diamond or all three of those things? Why would chemistry be important to our world? All right, five more seconds, friends. I think we all know what this one is. OK, well, I like how most of you said help the environment, but actually remember, all of these would work. So in the very beginning, we talked about that there are chemists who make up new medicines for us that we can help with farmers and fertilizers. So those of you got the, the green one, awesome. All right, keep trying. Scoreboard, creative camel, and looks like agile ostrich is the highest climber. Question number three. Let's see if you heard this one. Right now, a car cannot run on one of these. So a car can run on everything except one thing. What can a car not run on right now? A car cannot run on electricity. Red triangle. A car cannot run on corn. Yellow circle, a car cannot run on hydrogen, blue diamond, or a car cannot run on trash. Blue, or excuse me, green square. Okay, so this one's, you had to listen closely at how cars are already running right now. I kind of alluded to it earlier when we we're logging into our Kahoot. Which of one of these does a car not currently run on? Does it not run on electricity? Does it not run on corn? Can it not run on hydrogen or can it not run on trash? 
Let's see what we thought here. Last one and hey, good listening, you guys. All right, can't we're on trash right now. I would love for that to happen. Maybe in the future we will. All right. Ooh, Korea Camel, you are on it. Stellar Owl, highest climber. All right, number four. Our chemical car moved by. Now, again, I know you didn't do this, but think of the video where um, the other student got their car to work. What is the chemical car or how is it moving by? Is it, it's moved by pressured gas, red triangle, or chemical car moved by pushing hands. So do we push it? Yellow circle. Our chemical car moved by floating. We did have a liquid. Hmm. Blue diamond or our chemical car moved by batteries. Green square. Oh, OK, pressurized gas. Very good. Yeah, not too many people got the other ones. You guys are right on it. All right, last one. Wow, Creative Camel is just knocking it out of the park. OK, last one, best one. Now this one we didn't really talk about, but I want you to use your your thinking skills. To safely use chemicals, what should you do? You always do to safely use it. Are you going to shake the chemical? Red triangle. Are you going to smell the chemical? Yellow circle. Are you going to ask an adult first? Blue square or diamond, excuse me. Or are you going to eat it with your lunch? <gasps> yes, ask an adult. OK, always ask an adult first before you use a chemical because you just never know what's involved with that chemical. Good job, you guys. OK, let's see who our podium friends would be. We got Epic Rooster in third, Caring Falcon in second, and number one on the top of the podium, we have Creative Camel. Nice job, you guys. OK, so Creative Camel, thanks for being for playing there. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my screen again. You guys did a great job. OK. Well, thanks for joining me on our build, but next week if you are in the kitchen for the holidays, ask for some vinegar and baking soda, have fun with those chemical reaction cars, but our innovation live events are going to continue after our Thanksgiving break with our wonderful hydro station teacher who helped us out this morning, Mrs. Spystrek. Um, join here for a water project that we call Working Water, Building a Water Wheel. That's going to be on Friday, December 2nd at 9 a.m. after our break. And until then, check out all of our CVESD innovation instruction channel, our videos. There's tons of them that we have archived from the past years. Friends, have a wonderful week. Hope you guys enjoy your holiday and we'll see you next time. Bye.